Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress. Today we're going to talk about a boater's nightmare. You go to start that engine when you're out at anchor, away from your dock, and nothing happens. I'm going to show you a $20 solution that'll make sure that never happens to you. You have a boat. Sometimes your boat is your house, maybe only for the weekend. You have batteries for the house function. Your boat's also a vehicle. So you have a battery that starts that engine. It's your vehicle battery, just like your car. These two batteries are very different. They need to be treated different, but they also need to be brought together to charge. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to treat them well. If you think of your batteries as living beings, you wanna feed them both at the same time, but you wanna exercise them separately. Think of them as animals. You've got the house bank and you've got the starter bank. They should both eat when it's time to eat and they should both be fed and charged up. But when it's time to exercise, they exercise differently because they have different styles. The house bank is like a horse. It's gonna pull the plow. It's gonna be there for you for the long run. And it, and it can go down deep and it can do all those house battery things. The starter battery is like a lion. It should just lay there in the sun and do nothing until you need it. But when you need it, it puts out huge power and it reliably starts your engine every time. You're not gonna get that if you're asking the lion to pull the plow. So we're gonna talk about how to keep them separated when they need to be separated, but bring them together when they need to be brought together. So we're gonna talk about the old way that you would solve this problem. We're gonna talk about the new way to solve this problem. Then we're gonna talk about the equipment that is available and my little hack on how to do this very well and very cheaply. There are kind of three categories of batteries nowadays you wanna think about on your boat. You would have a lead starter battery and there's really nothing better than lead. I'll probably evangelize about that sometime um, in this video for reliability to start that engine. There's lead house banks, and these are very thick plate batteries that aren't very good at starting engines. They can't put out huge amounts of power, but they're really better at going deep in discharge and being used as a house bank. And then of course, lithium. Now, lithium is wonderful. I'm not gonna go into it in a lot of detail in this video, but I believe that a best system would have all three of these kind of batteries. And uh, obviously, I would like you to use my bank manager to bring them all together. But let's just forget about the lithium for now. You have a house bank, and that's responsible for supplying power to the house. It takes care of fans and lights, refrigeration if you have it. It's going to run your computers. It's going to run all your loads. It's going to play your stereo. You also should have a segregated battery that is for starting the engine. You really don't want to run that one down for two reasons. One reason is being this thin plate starter battery, its whole thing in life is to stay fully charged and when necessary, put out huge amounts of power to get that engine to crank. But because of those thin plates, it's actually very bad at cycling. If you cycled it way down deep, you wouldn't get a lot of life out of it. So we don't want to cycle that battery and we always want to keep it full and available to start the engine. There is nothing worse than realizing you've set some switches wrong or left something on and in the morning uh, after anchoring out in this beautiful bay, you realize you can't start your engine and you are stranded. In this video, we're going to talk about ways of making that never happen. To solve this problem, we have to look at it in two ways. We need to be able to charge the batteries and we need to be able to control how they're discharged. In a perfect world, we would want all the charging sources available to go to all the batteries. So anytime we had a charging source, whether that's running our engine and having the alternator put out power on a small boat, that could even be the outboard motor if you have an alternator in your outboard putting out power. It could be your solar panels. Everybody seems to have those nowadays, wind generator, whatever. When you're at your dock, you really kind of want the plug-in shore power to be able to charge all your batteries. 
you wouldn't want to forget to charge your lead battery if it's several months before you come back. That can suffer, you know, just discharging on its own. So we need to be able to get those electrons from the charge source flowing through all the batteries to charge them up. The second problem is we have to make sure that we never pull house loads out of that starter battery. You know, you don't want to be running your stereo using the starter battery and then finding out nine hours later that you simply can't start the engine anymore. That's just, I've already said it, but you all know it's unacceptable. The problem is these two problems kind of are in each other's way. In the last uh, electronics video, I showed that bilge pump circuit. And remember how we had the light light up when the bilge came on, because when the bilge pump came on, for whatever reason, the electrons could flow through this one wire, kind of in either direction in different situations. Electrons don't care. Wire doesn't have a direction to it. So if we connect the batteries together, to be able to charge everything, we've kind of connected them so that they can all discharge. It's almost like if we could build this circuit with one-way valves, life would be easier. Well, there are one-way valves. In fact, they're called diodes. I'm sure you've heard of diodes, but electrically, diodes are just that. They are a one-way valve for electrons. They let electrons flow through a circuit one way, and if it tries to reverse, they just become an off switch. So if you had a charge source and you wanted to branch the wires leaving that charge source to go to the various batteries in your system, if you put in these diodes, these one-way valves, you couldn't get flow from one of the batteries to the other. You couldn't get flow from other charge sources through that way. And most importantly, you can't suck power out of a battery in this backwards way. So it's kind of optimal from a purely logical point of view. Where it's not optimal is just something about the physics of diodes. Diodes cause a voltage drop. And the type of diodes that, that are used in this operation, it's called a battery isolator. You'll find it at the marine chandleries. They're silicon diodes, and they have a very large uh, voltage drop. I believe it's 1.2 volts. So if you put electrical force through them, it comes out weaker on the other side. Now, looking at our old equations, Back to the power equation, we know that power, watts, equals current times uh, voltage. It works for the whole system, but it can also work for subcomponents. Remember when we burned up that wire? Same thing here. We're going to be generating some heat. And the heat in this system is the amount of current flowing through the isolator multiplied by 1.2. So if you put 100 amps out of your alternator into your batteries, at least you're trying to do that, that 100 amps loses 120 watts. That's 120 watts that you could use for ship's operations. It's 120 watts that if it was in your battery, you could shut your engine off earlier if you're using that to charge. It's generally something you just don't want to do. And to kind of prove that this heat is really happening and these things are uh, wasteful, I want you to just look at the construction of them. Everyone you'll ever see has these cooling fins on it. They need them. They need to get rid of that heat. So in short, battery isolators were a tremendous way to solve this problem in like 1968, but not anymore. Now what we would want is some kind of an active system because electronics are cheap now, right? And reliable. We would want something that can look at the two batteries and say, you know, right now you guys should be connected and you should all be accepting charge. And later on it might say, hey, look, there's more discharge happening than charge and the house bank is start, should be running the loads and the starter bank, you should be on vacation. You should just be there when we need you. And these things exist. They're referred to as battery combiners. Again, you can go to the chandlery and find these things. They're not cheap. Um, I've seen them for like $280, uh, which for me isn't cheap for something that does this job. I see that there's somewhat cheaper ones available now in the $80 range, um, but I'm gonna show you something. Like most things in electronics, if you know the magic word, um, you can do anything. Here's the magic word, voltage sensitive relay. 
Uh, these are available on Amazon and on uh, eBay and all those places. We'll put it in our Amazon list like we always do. It's a voltage sensitive relay. Well, it's not really a relay. It's like theoretically a relay. It's a voltage sensitive semiconductor switch and the support circuitry to do exactly what we talked about before. What looks at the two batteries, it combines them, it does everything the fancy Westerine versions do, except these are like $25. And as far as I'm concerned, this is a good piece of kit. They're usually uh, in a silicon uh, protection so that they're very waterproof. I've had this particular one on my boat for I don't know how many years, and it's been doing good service. I changed some things around as part of my lithium upgrade and honestly just switched to a different style of this, just ever so slightly. Uh, took it off, I've been keeping it as a spare. Well, a friend needs one, and I decided I'm gonna give him this one, and then I won't have it to talk to you guys about. So that's what prompted this video today. So I highly recommend these guys. Um, this particular one, and almost all of them I've seen, they're rated for 140 amps, which really comes down to like 120 amps continuous. Um, most boats, that's the size of your alternator, so that works out well. Uh, there's two basic styles. There's dual sensing and single sensing. If you see a red dot on one of the terminals, it's a single sensing. I'll get to what that means specifically in a minute, but it means it senses on this terminal only. And if you don't see any paint on them, look in the small print, and if you see it say dual sensing, it's the dual sensing type. How they work couldn't be simpler. You probably have a battery isolator switch. And you might be realizing, I could do all this with a battery isolator switch. Every time I start the engine, I could uh, lock them together. And when I shut off the engine or the sun goes down, I could break them apart. Except we're humans, we're fallible, we forget these things. This goes parallel to that switch. So even if you leave the switch in the off position, this has the ability to turn that circuit on. You hook this to one of the batteries, this to the other battery, positive connection. You hook this to the ship's ground someplace so that it has a reference voltage. One other thing about wiring one of these up is if you take this ground wire, remember it has to go to ground to be a voltage reference, and you put a switch in it. If you ever turn the switch off, it disconnects the batteries. Just a little switch. You don't have to have a great big battery switch on this. Just something that can pass just milliamps, nothing. That's a handy thing to install because occasionally you want to do work on your system and one of these, if the battery is all fully charged, will keep that starter battery running to your lights and fans when you would rather have that circuit be dead so you can do work on it. What they do couldn't be simpler. Whenever the voltage in the sensed battery, that could be either battery or just one, depending on your application, goes above 13.3 volts, that's almost when charging first starts happening, it locks them together, so everybody gets to share the charging. Whenever the voltage drops to 12.8, which is the resting voltage of lead batteries, it breaks them apart, so the starter battery never is asked to run any of the house loads. And it just sits there passively doing that year after year. Uh, I highly recommend them. I just wanted to do a short video telling people that these things exist, and most importantly, since I'm cheap I assume others are too, that they could be had for a song, if you know the magic word. So if you're using my Bank Manager Plus idea, where you have starter lead, and you probably have a little house lead, and you have a whole bunch of lithium, or a little bit of lithium, or whatever you have, this still works great. And the model still holds up, because you still got the lion, and he wants to be treated like a lion, and you got that horse, and the lead house lead is the horse. What the lithium is, it's an ox. <laughs> It is better than the horse at pulling that plow, uh, and it will do the work before. So it's kind of like the ox does the work until it's exhausted, then you use the horse, but you never use the lion to plow the field. So what the voltage sensitive relay does is keep those draft animals doing the work and keep the lion lying in the savanna and ready to pounce on the antelope. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you found something useful in it. I want to thank all our patrons. When we do these videos that don't necessarily get a lot of views, it's the people helping us out, buying us a beer on Patreon, that make it worth happening. 
If you like this video and you want more of these videos, you've got to help me. You've got to help me promote them. Give it the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And if you have any friends that could learn a little more about their electrical system, be it boat, camper, they're all the same, send them a link to the playlist for this video series. It will be like a textbook on how to wire a boat and it'll be a very, very useful item for anybody. Bye from Temptress.